My dear people, everyone is bound to feel that our world is in a shocking mess. It may not be any worse than at other times, but it seems so to us. And after all, our world is like us. We're not lacking plans to make a more decent and peaceful world. It's just that we don't have enough good people to make our good plans work. We must never relax for a single moment in our work for a better world. But the biggest and most helpful contribution toward this that any of us can make is for us to become better people. We must have more people whose lives are motivated by the kind of charity that St. Paul wrote about long ago. The kind that suffers long. The kind that thinks no evil. The kind that beareth all things and endureth all things. St. Paul said that charity topped the list of all virtues. Buddha, Mohammed, Confucius, Moses and the Nazarene agree that the golden rule of doing for others as we would have them do unto us is fundamental in bringing peace and happiness to individuals and to our society. All good people have found gold in the golden rule. Amen. Mommy, that lady is asleep. Woo! Now, you, one more time and I'll take you right outside and spank you. You look up there. Go ahead. <laughs> Behave yourself. Mr. Clayton. One of the ushers took sick. Would you mind serving in his place? Not at all. Where are you going? They want me to help with the collection. But you look silly. You're too tall to take up collection. Besides, you're so clumsy. What? Where's Daddy going? He's going to help take up collection, dear. Where's Daddy going? Help take up collection. Oh, boy, this will be good. <laughs> Snow? Nice day for it. Where are you going? No place. The car's broken down. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry, Mrs. Butler. And the children had their hearts set on this. I don't get another day off in weeks. Now I don't know what to do with all this food. Why don't you folks take it and go someplace and enjoy yourselves? No, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Mrs. Clayton. I've got the answer. It's very simple. Take our car. Huh? Thank you, Mrs. Clayton. Oh, sure. Thanks, Mr. Clayton. Thanks. Give us a hand, Lou, with the stuff, huh? Come on, children. Here we go. Oh, goodness. Come on, children. See, isn't it great? They're tickled to death. Oh, Mr. Clayton. Would you call Nelson's garage? It's in the book. Tell him to come over and fix it. I'll need it in the morning for work. Nelson's garage? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, would you wipe the windshield, please? Sure. Well, that's good. I can see fine now. Have you got everything in the car? I forgot to feed the dog. Oh, no. Would you mind fixing him a little dinner? No. Have you any lean meat? 
Prince has such a weak stomach. Well, the markets are closed today, but we're having sweetbreads. They're easy to digest. Pan broil mm -hmm. and maybe a little cottage cheese? Sure. Oh, that'll be fine. Thank you, neighbors. That's very generous of you. There should be more people like you, Clayton. Oh, thanks. You know, there should be less people like the butlers. Incidentally, does it bother you that you loan the car to a man who can't see? Well, I never thought of that, but he's got good thick glasses. <coughs> well, maybe he's driving with his reading glasses. Morning, Lulu. Morning, Daddy. Morning, Bush. Hiya, Pop. Uh oh. Crispies. Crispy crunchies again, hmm? You've been eating those for two weeks. Only 11 more packages and I get my Indian soup. Oh, and what does uh, Lulu get? She gets a savory in my Indian soup. And then you said you'd help me get a dog. Sure, after I get my football. He's a son of the best of it, Daddy. I eat everything and he gets everything. You shouldn't talk with your mouth full. Say, Pop, isn't there something you can eat that can win Mom a new house? Mm. All right, you find out what it is, and I'll eat it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> What's so funny? Your son just pulled a nifty. Oh, what was it? Oh, just something between us, man. Hey, where's Chloe? She must have missed the bus. Monday's her bad morning anyway. Mm, it's a break for me. I like this cooked better anyway. Mmm, scrambled eggs and Canadian bacon and chives and stuff. Oh, you're so talented. Mm -hmm. You don't say. Mm. Oh, please, Mr. Clayton. My brother will be down any minute. No, he won't. I called him and he just rolled over and played dead. No, he did, did he? Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, do you suppose he'd mind if we ate? Beg your pardon? Mommy, what are you and Daddy doing? Nothing! <laughs> I'll be with you in a minute. Kid. <laughs> Morning, Claude. Mm -hmm. Morning. Didn't you sleep? Well, <clears throat> bad night. Daddy, here's our breakfast. Uh oh. Well, here's yours. And uh, here's yours. What did you do in the Navy? Have breakfast in bed? Yeah. The Admiral used to bring me a tray. Claude, if it isn't asking too much, you're a guest in the house. Not for long. Oh, I realize six months isn't a long time. But while you're here, the least you can do is cooperate and eat when we eat. Couldn't you have gotten up earlier this morning? What for? The relief office doesn't open till 10. Yeah, the government won't send the check to the house. He has to go all the way downtown and stand in line. No. Does the government know this? I'll have to write my senator about it. Well, a fine way for you to talk about your own brother. Though, no, forgive me, Claude. I didn't know what I was saying. I've been standing over a hot stove all morning. <laughs> Home on the range. <laughs> Uncle Claude, are you an idiot? Uh-huh. Somebody's been talking. Uh, you kids better get ready for school now. <laughs> yes, both of you brush your teeth. Go on, Scoop. All right, get on. Well, uh, neither one of you will laugh when I'm rich. Oh, the heck we won't. Lou, are you going to the funeral? Whose funeral? 
Oh, Lou. Poor Harry Gilmore. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. But I hardly knew Henry Gilmore. Harry. Was he the man who borrowed the hundred and eighty dollars from the bank and you guaranteed payment? Yep, poor Harry. Did he leave the widow any, uh... No. Sick a long time. Very sad. I'm sure he was a wonderful man. But don't you think at times you have too much faith in people? Lou, how can you have too much faith in people? I know it sounds terrible, but people impose on you. You're a soft touch. You always said you could picture you and me by our own fireside. Well, $180 would build a pretty nice fireplace in the home we're never going to get. Look, Lou, I don't regret it. Harry Gilmore was a fine man. He happened to need some money, and I saw that he got it. Of course, yeah. Everybody thinks well of Harry Gilmore. Name one thing wrong with Harry Gilmore. His health. Hey, she's got something there. Say, can I have a cup of coffee before you two go broke? Say, who can that be? Claude, would you mind if... Mind? No, go ahead. Oh, the telephone. Claude, but... I've got it. Hello. Yes, I'll accept the charges. Hello? No, hello, Mr. Butler. How are you? And your wife and the children? Uh-huh. And uh, how is our car? Oh, well, that's good. What? Oh, you're staying another day. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Butler. Our children will get to school. We'll manage somehow. Oh, think nothing of it. Sam will get to work. Oh, that's all right. What? Feed the dog again? Uh-huh, and no canned food. Oh, yes, I'll balance his diet carefully. Uh-huh. Well, have a good time, by all means. Lou, this is Mr. Nelson, the garage man. Hello, Mr. Nelson. He's going to have a cup of coffee with us. He is? Hmm. Oh, well, Mr. Nelson, sit right here. Take this. Over here. Oh, and the uh, crunchies, too, please. Thank you. Uh, Sam, what's Mr. Nelson doing here? Oh, he fixed the butler's car. Now, the brushes on the commutator were fluctuating. You don't say. Mm. The butler's bill. Coffee. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. You see, Mrs. Clayton, I run my business on a cash basis. With me, cash is king. Why, if I trusted people, I'd starve to death. You'd be surprised how many people don't pay. No, no, I wouldn't. Oh, it'd amaze you the number of deadbeats there are in this world. Absolutely worthless, no good. Have you met my brother, Claude? Oh, glad to know you. Charm. Don't you think there's a lot in what I said? No, not much. Personally, I think there's two sides to everything, including my face, which I'm now going to shave. Oh, he's only my half-brother. Hmm. Well, that's nice. As I was telling Mr. Clayton, he's the one who called for my services, and he's the one who should pay. But it isn't our car. Why should he have to pay the bill? Oh, the butlers have been our neighbors for a long while. You can trust them. They'll oh, pay you. Well, right? if you can trust them so much, you pay me and they can pay you, or I take the car back. Oh. Well, then I'll give you the money. Five, ten, fifteen... Oh, Sam, I forgot to tell you. The butlers phoned and said they're not bringing the car back. 
They decided to stay another day. The weather's so beautiful. Oh. Hmm. 16, 17. They did, huh? Mm -hmm. 18, 50, 75. Got any money, Lou? Oh, no, I haven't. I was expecting some of that. Would you like to use the children's lunch money? Oh, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that's near enough. Here. You said that was near enough. Well, we're uh, really in a fine fix now. The kids will have to walk to school, and I'll have to go with them. Well, it's only six blocks. And six back. And how are you going to get to work? Unless you use the butler's car. Say, how about that? Well, I wouldn't think of using their car without asking them. No, you wouldn't. Well, I... Sir, you brew a mighty fine bean. Great coffee, sign of a great cook. She certainly is. She cooked me a wonderful breakfast. Sure smells good, especially on an empty stomach. Haven't you eaten yet? No. Lou. I've got it. Mr. Nelson, how would you like your eggs? The same way? Well, now that you ask, Thank you, ma'am. No. Have you ever fixed them with black butter? No. Well, you burn a little butter in a saucepan, and you put the vinegar in the eggs in a little casserole, and then you take... Of course, there's always eggs Florentine if you have fresh spinach. No, but we could plant some. <laughs> no, that won't be necessary. Oh. Eggs and black butter is quite a dish. I'll bet if you tried it once, your husband would want it all the time. <laughs> Incidentally, that's, that's very funny what she said about planting the spinach. <laughs> Your wife's got quite a sense of humor. Yeah. Is yours? No, she's got asthma. It's awful. Uh, she's no fun at all. I bet you have a picnic with her. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's a barrel of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, fix your eggs, Mr. Nelson. You certainly did all right for yourself. <laughs> now you take my wife. I don't know. She's she's got a kind of a horse face. Oh, Mr. Nelson, I've seen some mighty pretty horses. I had a beautiful big horse. My wife's big too. His name was Bowley. See, that's funny. She's getting a little bald spot too, right on top. <laughs> I'm gonna start calling her Baldy. <laughs> no. No, I guess I better not. I, I gotta watch. I don't get too funny on account of her asthma. It gets her to laughing and she gets to wheezing. <laughs> <coughs> Sometimes she sounds like a whistle. Sometimes she sounds like a foghorn. Well, my wife's grandmother had the same trouble. She looked like a horse, huh? No, just, just asthma. Morning, Miss Lou. Hello, Chloe. This is the bus waiting for streetcars. Oh, that man of mine. No good little casino. Did you have trouble getting him up this morning? Getting him up? No, he didn't come home at all, the little fool. He thinks he's found another Lena Horn. All she is is lean. What she got, I ain't got twice as much of. I'll take over, Miss Lou. Who are we feeding? Brother Clark? Well, Miss Lou. See here, uh, who's that? Mr. Sam asked him to move in, too? I'm quitting. Yes, I'm quitting. He's just here for breakfast. Oh. Oh. Miss Lou, how does Mr. Sam find all these characters? I've tried to break him up at Chloe, but he just loves people. Yes, sir. Um, my man loves people, too, but he loves them off the premises. How does this one want his eggs? And black butter. No fool. <laughs> black butter. <laughs> black butter. I got to take another look at that specimen. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Clayton. Morning, Chloe. Morning. 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 And don't forget. Take his eggs off in exactly 33 seconds. Lou, 
His wife has asthma bad. She has? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. She's a mess. You ought to see what I go through. His wife has asthma. Is it contagious? Oh. Say, Lou, what are we going to do about his poor wife's asthma? Oh, I don't know, Sam, but I'll work on it. I'll write to Johns Hopkins and buy a medical journal. No, no, Lou. I mean that goose grease remedy of your grandmother's. It helped Butch's croup a lot. Uh, couldn't you make up a little batch of it for Mrs. Nelson? Sam, that takes four hours. It's Monday. Chloe and I'm sorry, I have I to go... come back later. No bother. Now, I've got a hunch it'll help her a lot. She can't go through life sounding like a foghorn. Oh, it'd be a blessing if you could cure her. All right, all right, I'm sold. Come on, kids, it's almost nine. Mother will take you. Sam, you'd better get going, too. Well, I always say one good turn deserves another. I'd like to drop your children off at school and take you on to work. Well, thank you. Did you hear that, Lou? Mr. Nelson's going to drop us off in his car. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mr. Nelson. Yeah, bread upon the waters, I always say. <laughs> well, I'll be back for the goose grease. Goodbye, little mother. Around lunchtime? Uh, a little later, about three. All right. <laughs> oh, no! Manager of our leading department store. He doesn't care. <laughs> well, Mrs. Kelly, hello. hello. <laughs> Say, how is that little um, baby of yours? Oh, he's just fine. Wonderful. Uh, do you remember her? Affinity? Yes. <laughs> of course, we met at your baby's christening. Yes, guys. <laughs> yes. And uh, how many teeth does he have now? He has five. Three upper, two lower. Five yes. teeth altogether? Three uppers and two lowers? Yes. <laughs> All right. Hey, her baby. Oh, I beg your pardon. This is Mr. H.C. Borden, our president, Mrs. Kelly and Mrs. Finity. Oh, how do you do? I'm delighted to see you. <laughs> how do you do, Mr. Borden? Her baby has five teeth already, and he's not more than, what, eight? Eight, eight months eight old. Eight months old. <laughs> and her boy will be graduating from Military Academy in. June. <laughs> Why, that's right, Mr. Clayton. Isn't that wonderful? Such a memory. And he's a great big fella, too. Why, he's that much taller than you are. <laughs> well, well. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, well, I'd like uh, to see something in teething ring. Teething ring? Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, for the little fella? Yes. Oh, of course. <laughs> Upstairs, please. The third floor. <laughs> and the uh, first counter on the right is come out of the elevator. Oh, yeah. Sam. After Miss Harrington. Thank you. All right. Why didn't you escort them up personally? It's not every day we sell a teething ring. No. Now, Sam, this is our biggest season, so don't waste time guessing people's names and how many teeth the baby has. Well, we wait all year for Christmas. You can have the other 11 months, but give me that Yuletide season. <laughs> you know, Sam, when sentiment runs high, that's the time to make the kill. So keep your eyes peeled for confused fathers and husbands. They'll buy anything. And it's our job to see that they get it. Excuse this me. This is the time. Can you tell me where Humboldt Street is? Eight, two, two and a half Humboldt Street. This is near Claremont. Oh, there's a city directory over there by the phone booth, madam. You know, Sam, we can't milk Easter very much. Father's Day's all right, moving neckties, but Christmas, ha-ha. <laughs> I'll have you know I broke my glasses, and it wouldn't do me any good to look it up in your old directory. Can I be of any help? Yes. I can see that your mother taught you manners. I'm an orphan myself. Uh, are you acquainted with our city? No, I just came in on the train. That's how I broke my glasses. I was in the dining car, and we hit a curb. There they went. Grismash. Well, that's too bad. Well, it's about 11 blocks from here. Let's see, this oh. is Main. Go down Main, five blocks to Elm. Uh, one short block to the right will bring you to Sycamore. Oh, there. That's, it. that's too many streets. Well, maybe this will help you. Here we are. Right here, five blocks down Main yes. to Elm. Now, be careful of this intersection. Oh, it's yes, very dangerous. Oh, yes. 
five blocks. Yes, I'll be able to get that. To Humboldt. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, right about here is 822. And I'll find the half. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you will. <laughs> oh, that's very nice of you. I can't get into all this, really. I ought to have my head examined then. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Sam, I want to talk to you. Up to now, you've sold a teething ring and drawn a map showing people how to get to Humboldt Street. Personally, I'd rather hear the cash register ring. Well, maybe they'll be back someday and make your cash register ring. Sam, you and I don't see eye to eye on anything. You told all the department heads they could take two hours off to go to Harry Gilmore's funeral. It's bad enough that I have to go. But he was your advertising manager for 30 years. I paid him for 30 years. If they want to make a big thing out of it, why don't they bury him at night? Then everybody could go in their own time. Hey, how about that? People are born at night, people die at night. They even play night baseball, don't they? But you just don't bury people at night. Well, you shouldn't bury him on my time, then. I beg your pardon. May I have a free sample of your new cold cream that you're advertising and demonstrating? There's your man. He'll direct you. <laughs> you take the elevator. Thank you. Here I am again. What's the matter? Did you lose the map? No. I was just walking along and I got to thinking. Hello there. I was just telling one of your clerks here that I was walking along. Uh, this is Mr. H.C. Borden, our president. How do you do? Our president? He? Now, oh, <laughs> I thought you were president. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, you were so sweet about telling me all those directions. I remembered something I needed, and I thought, why not buy it from that nice young man? Well, I'm sure that whatever it is you want, we have. What did you have in mind? Have you any knitting needles? Uh, what kind? Steel or bone? And uh, what kind of yarn? Oh, I wouldn't know. You see, I'm just taking it off. I have a granddaughter. Don't tell me you're a grandmother. Oh, stop it, you fool. She's going to be married. <laughs> She's going to marry the nicest young man. And... I'm going to be alone a great deal from now on, so I thought I'd take up knitting. Well, uh, what do you intend to knit? A sock or uh, perhaps a hug-me-tight, huh? I had in mind a turtleneck sweater for a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, seriously, uh, what would you like to knit? I thought I'd like to start on those argyle socks that everybody's knitting. Mm, well, the uh, argyles are a little tricky to begin with. Mm -hmm. First, of course, you'll have to learn how to knit and purl. That's the basis. That's where you have to start. But uh, we give lessons. And they're free. Couldn't you just use our needles until she decides whether she likes it or not? Oh, I'll buy them. And speaking of buying, I plan to buy Johnny and Rhoda a wedding present in Chillicothe and ship it here to them. But if I bought it here, it'd save all that freight, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. I believe in giving things to people when they're young. Don't you? So I'm furnishing their house complete with everything. Stove, refrigerator, washing machine, silverware, linen, just everything. And, and I'll need your help to remind me in case I forget anything. It'll cost several thousand dollars, but they're young. You'll certainly make Rhoda and Johnny very happy. You know, Johnny's name's Camel. This is going to be very funny. When Rhoda marries him, she'll be Rhoda Camel. Camel? <laughs> get it? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get it. What's that? Phi Beta Kappa? Mm -hmm. You don't think it's funny? You know, sometimes I wonder. <laughs> Where's the furniture department? Furniture? running on a schedule. You might run it with a little courtesy, too. You know, if it hadn't been for you, mister, 
he'd have waited until I got just in front of the bus and then run over me. Wouldn't have been a bad idea, Dad. What's all the hurry these days? Where's everybody going? Absolutely no consideration for anybody else. That's why it's a pleasure to meet a person like you. I would have had to wait 20 minutes for another bus. And I have a dentist appointment, and you know how hard it is to get them these days. Oh, yes. You know, none of us go to the dentist often enough. And don't let anyone ever tell you to have your wisdom teeth out. Because if I didn't have my wisdom teeth, he wouldn't have had anything to bridge to. Hey? Hi. 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 I can't begin to thank you. Thank goodness for people like you. <laughs> Most people are so thoughtless and rude these days. I was telling my husband only the other day that... I bet he gets cauliflower ears from listening to her. You're paid to run the bus, not to insult the passengers. It all started with Sir Galahad here, stopping the bus, making a hero out of himself. <laughs> uh, don't lose your temper, mister. It takes all kinds of people to make a world. From a distance, he must have thought she was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> For that, I'll have to report him. What's your number? Here's the whole description. <gasps> Take it all down. Just as I thought. No hair. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Nothing could grow on a head like that. So you. <laughs> oh, here it is, all in his hat. Melvin Z. Wurtzberger. <laughs> Melvin Z. Wurtzberger. <laughs> It's really people like you, mister. Yes, you said that, that before. That restores... Will you let me off at the next corner, please? Why don't you stick around, Bob? Maybe she'll bake you a cake. Why don't you shut that big, fresh face of yours? <laughs> no. <laughs> don't worry. This is his last day with the railroad company. She was running down there very fast. I thought she wanted to get in the bus. Oh, well, look, don't get... Much, much better than 
and the rest It's the best It's a wonderful number Shirley May is feeling better Worse Seems to be jumping Yeah, she's jumping all right her next jump will be off a bridge, mark my words. She's got those, when I woke up this morning, he was gone, blues. I was out with them half a dozen times, and he even told me he was going to marry her. The yellow so-and-so didn't have nerve enough to tell it to her himself. He wrote to the landlady, and she gave Shirley May the news with her eviction notice. That's rough. Yeah. I'd take her in myself, Mr. Clayton, you know that. But my husband, the kid, and myself are all in one room. It's pretty crowded, you know. You were at the wedding reception, remember? Gee, if she doesn't get a break, you're going to be reading about her in the newspapers. Number one on the hit parade in a month, I guarantee. Shirley May, may I speak to you? Ruth, will you take over for a minute? Sure. Well, we've made a lot of sales already. I'm going to make a note to get you a little raise. Oh, but I'm quitting, Mr. Clayton. You're quitting? Yes. Well, you are. Sit down. You know, your department has done wonderfully since you took over. Why quit? Because I can't stand it anymore, Mr. Clayton. Seeing those songs gets me down. I... Now, look. You've got only one problem. Where are you going to sleep tonight? Now, I'm going to give you the rest of the day off, and you're going out and try to find yourself a place to stay. And if you don't have any luck, give me a call and I'll try to find you something. You're too young and too pretty and... Oh, sure. You're attractive enough to get a single man. Yeah. Put on a new face. Start a new life, huh? Nice people, the Claytons. Oh, Mr. Nelson, how are you? And this is Mrs. Nelson, I take it? Yeah, this is her. Well, we just came by to congratulate you. That goose grease of yours did the trick, Mrs. Clayton. Helped her a lot. Oh, fine. I'm sure grateful to you, Mrs. Clayton. We just dropped by to return your jar. I fill it with some of my special meat sauce. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. It's very nice of you. Well, thanks. I well, hope we didn't come in at the wrong time during dinner hour or anything like that. I'd, uh, I'd like to ask you to stay to dinner. All right. I mean, if we had, uh, but you couldn't have picked a worse evening. We're just having a little sort of, uh, um, it's nothing, Billy. Louis says, come and get it. That roast beef, that Yorkshire pudding, and them golden brown potatoes is awaiting. Lou? Oh, hello, Mr. Nelson. Glad to see you, Mr. Clayton. Yeah. And is this? Yeah. This is the missus, one I was telling you about. Well, hello. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, thanks again. That meat sauce of ours will go wonderful on your roast beef. Well, uh, say, Claude won't be here tonight. That's what I say, Sam. Won't you come in? Uh, well, we can't stay long, but just... Chloe! I want everybody to try my meat sauce. Tell me how you like it. <laughs> Oh, no. Here you are, Bert. Pass to you, Daddy. Is that the same jar the goose grease was in? Don't worry, little man. I scoured it thoroughly with soap and water. Mm-hmm. I quite agree. I can still taste the soap. Butch. Very tasty. What do you put in it, Mrs. Nelson? Well, first... I know. Soap. Butch. <laughs> Come on, kids. Let's go to the kitchen. <laughs> vegetables, uh, vegetables. Oh, sorry. They're gonna have their dinner in here, Chloe. <laughs> I thought so. I want you two to finish your dinner without a peep out of either one of you. Chloe? 
boy. You let me know if they don't behave, will you? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, Sam, Mr. Nelson was just saying his wife sells real estate. Oh. Uh-huh. Well, uh, uh, do you think this would be a good time to buy, Mrs. Nelson? Well, mark my words, prices won't be any lower in our time. <laughs> What's the matter? No, they got Oh. Uh, would you be willing to trade this house in? We don't own it. You don't own your own home? A man in your position? Clayton. If the price was right, what type of a home would you be interested in? Well, I've always had my heart set on an early American farmhouse style. Well, there is one. It's not on the market yet. The owner built it himself. He's an architect, and he may go to South America. Oh? And she brought all her old furniture from Connecticut. Oh, no. It sounds just like my dream home. Look. See? Mm -hmm. Well, look at that. Why, it's enough like it to be the same house. Really? Sam, did you hear that? Oh. When will you know? When will he know? Well, he's waiting to hear from South America. Oh, Sam, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get it? I mean, if they didn't ask too much, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. If the price is right. What's the matter? Don't you want to buy a house? Oh, excuse me. I'll answer that. Some more meat sauce? Oh, no, thank you. Sister dear. Yes, brother dear. Please pass the soap. <laughs> you have only the two. Yes. Uh, tell me, how many bedrooms are there in the house? Well, there's three bedrooms and a den that can be used for a spare. Oh, that's fine. We can use the extra room because of the children. Have you any? I'm sorry. Uh, this is very important. Someone wants to see me that uh, owes me some money. They may pay me. Oh, no, Sam. Well, by all means, get your things. Well, I didn't want to leave you. With us? No, I didn't. Oh, I sure did, Clay. Oh, Sam, I'll be perfectly all right. <laughs> ah, our dearest friend. Welcome to our domicile. And here's little mother. Isn't she beautiful? Hello. Hello. Oh, Sam. We're just bursting with happiness, thanks to you. Sam, I won't kiss you, but I would like to extend a right hand loaded with gratitude. Come on, sit down. Uh, we asked you over here because, well, we didn't know yet whether you told Lou anything about our loan. No, it's better this way. How's business? Oh, great, great. We got the busiest little gas station in the county, and things are getting better all the time. I'm going to build a little one room and bath in the rear of the station. We're going to live there, too. You see, that way we'll be saving the rent on this thing. That is, if you think it's a good idea. I've got all the materials ordered. I can cancel it, though, if you don't think it's wise. Oh, well, I think it's a good idea. Oh, when do you think you'll be able to start paying me back? Well, the way business is going, I think I can start paying you next month. We should have it all paid off within six. Sam, I hope you feel all right about this thing, because, well, sometimes we worry because you haven't told Lou. Oh, no. I, well, I think it'll be better to surprise her when you pay me. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> Oh, I'd have been home early, you know, like that darn car What's stalled the three times. It'd never be the same. Did anybody pay you, or could you have stayed here and had a nice dinner? Well, it wasn't a waste of time, but well, I'll explain it to you later. No, they didn't pay you. No. Well, did you have a, have a barrel of fun with the Nelsons? Oh, no, sure. When they finally left, I took a hot bath for my nerves. And then, what do you think happened? Well, um, before you go any farther, let me tell you I'm sorry for wishing all these people on you. It isn't fair. I'm through getting you in all of these things. No more Nelsons ruining our dinner. No more butlers ruining our car. Speaking of butler, that four-eyed four-flusher, now it can be told. He put a great big dent in our fender, which cost me $8.75 more. <laughs> no. Yes. I figured, why ask him for it when the deadbeat won't pay me the $19 he owes me now? And I didn't want to tell you about it. <laughs> That's before. all right, Sam. <laughs> well, I thought you might uh, rub it in. Well, me? 
Oh, no. No, you wouldn't? <laughs> You're not mad at me? No. <laughs> Lou, you're a darling. Oh? Uh -huh. Let's forget about other people tonight, hmm? All right, if we can. Hmm, sure we can. Let's be selfish and just, uh, just think about ourselves, huh? Mm hmm. Hmm. And the heck with the Nelsons. <laughs> and the heck with the Butlers. <laughs> oh, Sam, please. What's the matter? Can't you concentrate on your husband? I'm doing my best. <laughs> well, does my love border on the ridiculous? Yes. In a way, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know me, don't you, Sam? <laughs> Your husband? But, Sam, you don't understand. I don't understand. You remember the butlers, don't you? Butlers? <laughs> Good evening. Hello. Hello. I suppose you think I'm <clears throat> quite a flirt. Well, I hope I didn't shock you. No, you don't always keep your shades down, you know. <laughs> so what's so funny? What's the joke? I suppose you're wondering why we're here at this hour. Yes, I certainly am. Isn't it something we can take up tomorrow? Uh, no. Well, you thought it was going to cost you only $27, didn't you? I mean, for the butlers to have a picnic with your car. Well, you haven't heard the half of it. They really had a picnic. They turned the other car over. <laughs> the other car? It was his fault. That's right. Mr. Butler was driving along, minding his own business, when suddenly, right in front of him... But then it was too late, wasn't it, Mr. Butler? Yes, much. <laughs> Say, what's the idea? You didn't tell me you had an accident when you brought the car back. Well, I didn't want to worry you. I thought I could talk to the fellow and that he'd be reasonable. And I did have a nice talk with him down in the ravine. <laughs> Look, quiet, Lou. <clears throat> but uh, when I heard what he wanted, it was just ridiculous. I knew you'd never pay that. Me? What about you? Well, that's just what I told him. I said, look, if you're going to sue anybody, sue me. Don't sue a nice guy like Sam Clayton. It wasn't his fault, except uh, legally. It was your car. <laughs> he said he looked me up and I have a reputation for not paying my bills just because I haven't been working. I lost my job, incidentally. See, you tried to do us a favor and he lost his job because of you. <laughs> That's how life is. If you hadn't loaned us your car... Your car? Well, that's where it all started. Now, I'll tell you how it happened. This is fascinating. Oh, pardon me. Go ahead, Mr. Butler. You don't have to. <laughs> It'll be in the complaint all written out, and I can read it. Uh, good night. Don't you want to go, too? <laughs> Everything happens to us. Just when we were trying so hard to save some money, too. I know exactly how you feel. We've been trying to save money to buy a home, haven't we, dear? Sure have. It's the same with us. Someday we hope to get his eyes fixed. Never mind about my eyes. That's what they're going to say. They're going to try and give me that old eye test. But we'll fight this together. I can see as well as the next fellow. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Over there, dear. Oh. Over there. Where will they put them next? <laughs> what are you thinking of, dear? Do you want to pick me up and start all over again? <laughs> You're darn right I do.
know you've heard this before, but I'm sorry again. I... Yes, I know, dear. But now we have a lawsuit on our hands. Our home's farther away than ever. Damages, attorney's fees. If this keeps up, we won't be able to buy a tent. We just can't go on like this. Sam, when are you going to learn that there are some people in this world who don't deserve your help? Just think of the people you've done things for since we've been married. Then think of how many have paid you back. Take Claude, for instance. He's sleeping in my bed, our bed, with you. Butch is in there on a cot, and I'm here with Lulu for how long? Sam, we have no life of our own. This isn't what my mother told me at all. Honey, we've tried every other arrangement. Except to throw my brother out. Oh, I, I know he was badly wounded. I try to make allowances for it. But Sam, he's got to move. Oh, I think Claude's got a lot of... Lead? <laughs> I can't throw him out until he finds himself. But he's not even looking for himself. Oh, I know it's ungrateful to say that about a man who's done so much for his country. But if, if he'd just go away somewhere, maybe he could find himself in South Africa. A lot of people find themselves there. I know, I know how you feel. I'm not too happy in there myself. Us, we three boys. Who could that be at this hour? I'll find out. Whoever it is, Sam, be firm. Not another nickel. Not another nickel. And if they reverse the charges, hang up. Cincinnati. No. Yes, for ten days. Oh, goody. Maybe he'll find himself there. Yeah. What's he going to do? Uh, well, there's a big music festival. Everybody's coming from miles uh, around. Not my brother. What's he going to do? Shoot pool. That's more like it. There's a big tournament. He's pretty good, you know. Mm, so I hear. I think pool's very nice, don't you? Yeah, pool's a very interesting game. It's a very old game. I think it was very nice of Claude to call and let us know, don't you think? Daddy? Yes? Mommy? <laughs> Daddy, now you have to tell me a story. All right. Which story do you want? Cinderella. First, we've got to get in the bed. Oh! Now we keep her up. There. Now, once upon a time, there was a little girl named Cinderella. And she had two wicked sisters. And didn't she have a wicked aunt, too? Oh, yes. She used to make Cinderella work from morning until dark. Well, anyway, along came a fairy godmother and changed little Cinderella into a beautiful princess. What about the mice, Daddy? What mice? Uh, uh, the fairy godmother had some mice. Oh, she did? Oh, and, yes. That's... And, she, uh, and she turned the mice into six beautiful white horses. That's right. Mm -hmm. So Cinderella, Cinderella went out to the garden and brought in a great big pumpkin and, and um, gave it to the horses. No! No? And she gave it to the fairy godmother. And the fairy godmother skinned it and turned it into a six, I mean, a carriage. That's right. I remember now. And she hooked up the six white horses to the pumpkin, I mean, the carriage, and told Cinderella to jump in the carriage, and whoosh, away they went. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And they went, away, they went away to the ball, didn't they? Yeah. So they went to the ball. Now, Cinderella, was all, she was changed into a beautiful princess by this time, wasn't she? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And, oh, boy, what a princess. Yeah. 
Where was I? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, the... <laughs> beautiful princess. <laughs> oh, she was so beautiful. She, she, oh, gosh. <laughs> the, what a beautiful princess. Oh, yeah, and she lost her shoe. And she had so many children, she didn't know what to do. Oh, Daddy, that's another story. And they were all hungry besides. So she went to the cupboard, and the cupboard was bare. So the poor bear had none. Well, anyway, <clears throat> where was I? Now, let me tell you her story, Daddy, and you go to sleep. All right. So Cinderella waited and waited for days and days. The question was, would she and Prince Charming ever get together. And suddenly, the door opened, and there he stood, the prince himself. So everybody in fairyland went to sleep. Three little pigs went to sleep. The big bad wolf went to sleep. Little Miss Muffet was so tired, she collapsed and fell on her tuffet. And the spider went to sleep beside her. Everybody was so tired. Even the Sandman had stopped counting the sheep in the meadow and the cows in the corn. Everybody's asleep but us. Just you and me. a surprise for you. I've given up pool. He's given up? Yes, I heard. You hung up so fast, I thought you were disgusted with me. Oh, no, it wasn't. Say, what's the occasion? What are you two all dolled up for? Oh, this is just... <clears throat> what was it? We were just celebrating the longest day of the year. Yes, that's it. Oh, I don't get it. You explain it to him. I'll tell Lulu another story. Forever uh, Goldilocks. I'll get it, Sam. Is this uh, Samuel R. Clayton's house? Yeah, uh-huh. I'm Sam Clayton. Mm, yeah. Look, I got a gal in the back of my car, and she's in a bad way. She had me stop at a drugstore for a minute. I should have got wise then, but I didn't. Next thing I know, I look in the mirror, I don't see her. I turns around, and there she is out on the floor. Uh, but look, this is a private yeah. resident. Why don't you take her to the receiving hospital? Hospital. Yeah, I know. Look, buddy, I wouldn't act so wise if I was in your shoes. You know, I might be doing you a favor. I just didn't find the sleeping pills. I found your car, Samuel R. Clayton. Oh, I know who it is. Shirley May. Shirley May. He knows it. Sam, you've got to keep a level head. Lou is right in there. Oh, be quiet. Go call Dr. Brown. Orange 3621. All right, Sam. She works at the store. She took an overdose of sleeping pills. Is there something we can do before the doctor gets here? What happened, Mommy? 
I don't know yet, dear. You go get in Mommy's bed. Uh, Lou, don't you think you ought to get something on? What is it, Lou? What's so serious? What is it? He doesn't drink. No, sometimes I wish he did. Gamble? No, but I'd prefer it to what he's doing. He isn't in love with somebody else. Yes. Everybody. He loves everybody. He's in love with the human race and animals and bird life and fish. Why, he wouldn't even swat a fly. Nor any of those, those leeches who cling to him. He just can't help helping people. And that's bad? Well, how does that affect your life? What life? Oh, all right. You say marriage is a case of give and take. Well, he gives everything away and I just have to take it. He's so sorry for people. He's his brother's keeper and he's got too many brothers. He started with my brother and he's built up from there. He wants a house by the side of the road. To be a friend of man. And I do the cooking. Oh, don't look at me like that. I know I sound like an idiot. <laughs> I know how I feel, but when I say it, it, it just doesn't come out right. It sounds selfish, but there are other words like wanting and wishing and yearning and needing. Lou, let's get one thing straight. All peoples are agreed that there's Nothing greater than helping one another. It's uh, the only way we can make a happier world. But, but you, you have a point. <laughs> Here I've been selling this all my life, and a man takes me up on it, and now his home's unhappy. Well, there's no question but what the happiness of the home comes first. Uh, Sam a good father? The children suffer by his actions? Oh, no. No, he's a good father, all right. Is he a good husband? Well, he's got a blonde from the store in our bed right now, if that's what you mean. Oh, no, no, it's perfectly harmless. She just tried to commit suicide, so he brought her in. Well, maybe Sam's overdoing it a little. I hope my sermon last Sunday didn't cause him to go overboard. Oh, no, no, that didn't start it. It might have aggravated it a little. But he's always been like that. Even on our honeymoon, he saw a man with his car stuck in the mud, wheels spinning. My Sam jumps out, gathers twigs, rips branches off trees, and shoves them under the wheels. Then for chains, he takes the straps off our suitcases and wraps them around the tires. Then, on his hands and knees, covered with mud. He says, now try it. So the man put the car in reverse and ran over him. Then without even a word of thanks or apology, the man drove away with our straps. Sam spent most of our honeymoon in the Queen of the Angels Hospital. That's when I learned to play the saxophone. Now, you'd think that would be a lesson to him about helping his fellow man. But no. Lou, you still love the big guy. Give him another chance. I'll talk to him. Uh, well, I don't know exactly how to put it to him. I, I don't want to tell him to uh, disregard everything that I stand for. I, well, I, I'm not sure just yet how I'll tell him, but uh, I'll look up something on moderation. Well, that, that might help. What's the best way to see him? How can I uh, meet him uh, accidentally, huh? Well, you could run into him casually at the athletic club. He takes the workout on his lunch hour. 
if he hasn't given his trunks away. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We're having lamb chops for dinner. What'd you have for lunch? Oh, uh, salad. I make a marvelous salad at the club and a glass of tomato juice. Did you uh, eat alone? No, with the Reverend Daniels. I asked him what he was doing at the club, and he said a little exercise wouldn't hurt anybody. <laughs> he did. You know, there's a man with a brilliant mind. Yeah? People just don't appreciate his wisdom. More people should listen to his sound advice. Well, if you ask me, I think he's a little mixed up. I think he's having trouble with his wife. He is? He is? Mm -hmm. It's got him so upset, I think it's affecting his health. So the poor man's going to start going to the club and exercise and try to get back into shape. Oh. Well, what did he say to you? Well, he didn't say much of anything. I did most of the talking. Oh. He seemed so uh, troubled and unable to express himself. I think it's serious, Lou. You should have seen the look on his face when I suggested that uh, maybe you should go over and have a little talk with his wife and try to straighten her out. Yeah. I, I said to him that uh, you'd gone through a few things and with me in a small way, but you were so level-headed. I knew something was wrong when he said, our wives' happiness is the all-important consideration. He said, we must give up whatever is necessary to achieve that. And you had an answer for that? No. I asked him a question. Oh. How much does a wife expect a man to give up? Should he ask her every time before he makes a decision? How much of his own judgment should he rely on? And how often should he run to her? If he ran to her all the time, she wouldn't want him because he had no judgment. I mean... If he's going to drop a dime into a beggar's hat, does he have to run to the telephone first and spend a nickel of it to ask her permission? That's silly. I should say. My point is, if he's going to keep giving things up, why doesn't he give up his self-respect and just give up? She knew what he was before she married him. She knew what she was getting into, didn't she? Poor Mrs. Daniels. Wait till you see the inside. Come on, Sam. Isn't it beautiful? And look at that view. Sam, ask Mrs. Nelson how much it is. And don't quibble. You won't have any trouble with it. It's not bad, you know. I love a fireplace, and it's real. Hey, you're making it awfully tough for me. <laughs> oh. oh, I've never seen anything like it. Have you? Great. And we won't even have to change the wallpaper. What's the matter? Bed too small for you? Oh. Little short, huh? Little. We'll put a leaf in it. <laughs> oh, Sam. Look behind you. When I think of my new dressing table, I can't bear to look at myself in this thing. Sam, what's holding us up? Why didn't you close the deal on the spot? Well, you just can't do things that way. You can't? Well, she promised to hold it. Well, I hate to think of waiting even 24 hours. What are we waiting for? We've got over 5,000 in the house fund. 
Oh, Sam, we'd never find a place more beautiful. And I promise you, I'll cut expenses in every conceivable way. And don't give me a Christmas present, not a thing. This is the greatest present you could ever give me. This is a present of my life. Guess who was here and left a note for you? Mr. and Mrs. Adams. That lovely little couple used to live next door. Oh. I miss her. Hot time flies. You know, they've been gone about eight months now, and she's big as I am. If it's a boy, they go call it Samuel. And if it's a girl, Lucille. They couldn't wait. That's the reason why they left you that note. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Is it confidential, Sam, or is it money? Thirty-nine dollars and fifty cents. What are they sending you money for? Well, last summer, when you were away, I spent some time with them, and they had a problem. Oh, and what did good Sam do? He said, look no further. I solved everything. Here's your thirty-nine fifty. All right, so you loaned the money, and they paid you back. That's nice. Lou, they were worried about... <clears throat> whether or not to have the baby, which they are now going to have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, things were pretty bad for him, no money and no work. And they had a chance to grab a spot on Highway 72 where a lot of trucks go by. It's a wonderful intersection, Lou, and they're doing very well. On 39.50? What have they got, a portable peanut stand? Oh, no, a gas station. There's a lot of money in it. Of course, it takes time to get established. How much did you give them? It's a triple intersection, Lou. See, there's 72, and there's another one here. Sam, and... please. No, don't worry. They'll pay us back. You can't guess how many trucks go by. We sat there and clocked them, and you'd be surprised. How many do you think? How much did you give them? Oh, uh, well, he'd have paid us back sooner, only behind the gas station, they built a little tiny... A uh home? -huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's nothing you'd like. Sam, you've given away the whole house fund. Lou, these people are really worthwhile. No, dependable. Sam, no. Well, let, <laughs> let me explain it, honey. <laughs> Darling, you do believe babies should be born, don't you? <laughs> don't throw their baby in my face. No wonder you wanted 24 hours. What good will that do? It's more like 24 years. What's the baby going to do? Sell papers and pay us back? Oh, Sam. Why can't people stand on their own two feet and have babies? <laughs> Well, I, I know it seems wrong not to have discussed it with you first, but this was an emergency, and you were down in the country with your mother. Before telephones, huh? <laughs> well, the bank wouldn't give it to him because, well, he had no credit, and, well, I thought he'd paid me back <laughs> before, only... Before well, I found out. I'm fed up with your helping people behind my back. You're nothing but a double-crossing, two-faced, sneaking Samaritan. Lou. They're good people, and they were dead. Oh, shut up. Go away and leave me alone. <laughs> well, you'll feel different after she had the baby. So will she. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you silly fool. <laughs> Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Well, I thought I'd drop by and see how the Claytons were getting along this fine Sunday afternoon. <laughs> well, come in. Well, I watched you two out of the corner of my eye this morning and was delighted to see you both looking so serenely happy. Yeah, we're happy. Hmm. Say, uh... How are you and your wife getting along now? Any better? Yes. 
I don't think uh, we'll have any more trouble. I told her about our little talk, Sam. Did a lot of good. She saw your point. I told her what you said about dropping the dime in the beggar's hat. Made her laugh. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, that's fine. Then there'll be no need for Lou uh, straightening her out now. No, no, I <clears throat> don't think that'll be necessary. Uh, we uh, both arrived at the realization that so many domestic squabbles are silly. Each has to give a little and uh, see the other's viewpoint. A simple discussion of the problem and it blows away like... Uh... Boulder Dam, huh? Boulder. Reverend Daniels, do you believe in women having babies? Uh-huh. Well, I don't know who else... Uh... Well, under the right circumstances, yes. Well, that's what I thought. So I loaned the couple next door some money. You're so done, it's Sam. <laughs> well, you, you public benefactor, you... Uh. Uh, hello, Reverend Daniels. Hello. It's always a pleasure to see you. <laughs> well, I... Um... Just stopped by on behalf of a very worthy cause. Yeah, something that Sam and I, um, and he, he thought that you would be interested too. It's, um, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, something that slips your mind at the moment? Bundles for midgets, maybe? Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's um, a, a charity bazaar. And Sam has volunteered your services as a gypsy fortune teller. Oh? He, he's going to be a sideshow barker. <laughs> Ought to raise a lot of money telling fortunes. Uh, show her the uh, pretty costume that you got for us, Sam. No, you show sure? Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> no. <laughs> Me? Well, it's really a... Very nice costume. There. There, isn't that a pretty costume? You'll be perfect as a gypsy. Yeah, gypsies have no home, have they? Good night, Chloe. And after this, you kids get home earlier. Uh, we will. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good night, Chloe. See you tomorrow. Hey, before we go in, would you like 15 minutes more of what I think of you? Well, I'd like it, Claude, but it's awfully late. Look, it's only 6 o'clock in Australia. Come on, sit down, please. <laughs> All right. You ought to make the most of these moments when you're with me. No, we'd better not, Claude. Your sister won't like it. Never mind my sister. And what did I leave off? Your hair, your eyes, your lips. And that sunny smile. <laughs> oh, stop. Did I say I'd walk a million miles for one of those smiles? <laughs> Did I say I'd climb the highest mountain? Mm, and swim someplace, too. Oh. And I've got you under my skin? Mm-hmm. And, uh... Are you impressed? <laughs> I like you very much, Claude, but... the Claytons have been wonderful to me, and I don't think they'd approve of this. You see, you don't really know me very well. Well, I'm trying to find out the best I can. Uh oh, we're trapped. Don't make a move. Fixing some coffee, hmm? I thought it'd be a good idea. I think we'll be up a little late tonight. Huh. You didn't say a word on the way home. I thought you were having a good time. You danced a lot with H.C. You're doing all right, too. Sam, H.C.'s offered me my old job back. He wants me to go to Europe in the spring on a buying trip. That is, of course, with your approval. It'd be a golden opportunity to put some money away, and I'll only be gone three or four months. Mm -hmm. You can forget it. So that's your attitude. You're darn right it is. Well, I don't understand why you mind. You hardly ever see me anyway. If I go, you could do as you please. Maybe I'm holding you back. Think of how many more organizations you could join. If I take this job, I get a complete wardrobe furnished, unlimited expense accounts, and a fine salary. I'm going to Europe. Well, I don't blame you for feeling that way, but I don't want you working. Oh, you don't, huh? 
snow. I suppose it's all right to go ahead with the salary you earn and give away, but, Sam, if we're ever going to have a home... I know how much the house meant to you. No, oh, it's not just the house. It's, it's everything. All these problems you've brought into my life. Uh, I'm losing my mind. They'll be dropping a net on me. Problems? What, for instance? Problems? What, for instance? Well, Shirley May, for instance. You brought this this department store Magdalene into our house, and how does she repay our kindness? By trying to put her hooks into my brother. Oh, I'll admit Claude's no angel, but I can assure you I'm not going to stand aside and see him wind up with that alley cat. My mother would turn over in her grave. She would, huh? Yes. And any girl who tries to commit suicide because a married man gets tired of paying her expenses and tosses her out on her ear is hardly the catch of the season, even for my brother. Listen, I know your brother better than you do. He might be better off with a couple of hooks in him. Oh. She marrying him is like her jumping out of the frying pan into your family. Don't change the subject. Are you going to ask her to get out, or am I? Claude, I'm sorry you had to hear it all this way. Somehow I plan to tell you in my own words, a little differently. I probably would have let myself down a lot easier. Now look what you've made me say. Me? <clears throat> Good evening. Hello there. We're Mr. and Mrs. Adams. Used to be next door neighbors. Well, won't you come in? Thank you. You heard what the man said. Come on, little mother. Take it easy now. Take it easy. We're old friends of the Claytons, and we're a little high. Mm -mm, not me. He's been drinking my drinks, too. You may not know it, but Sam Clayton is the dearest friend I've got. You know, if it weren't for Sam, my wife wouldn't be having a baby. Ah, here they are. I give you our dearest friends and benefactors. Two hearts of gold in three-quarter time. Come on, little gypsy. Don't you like the waltz? What have we got to waltz about? We're celebrating, Mrs. Clayton. We've had a few drinks. Uh-uh. I mean, I've had the drinks. What have you been drinking? Gasoline? Wouldn't they buy it? They not only bought all of the gasoline, they bought the whole station. Sam, I tell you, it's unbelievable. A guy pulls into the station and he says, fill her up. The guy says he likes me. He says he's been watching me on the corner and counting the trucks going by. In short, he'd like to purchase my growing business. I guess he probably noticed the way we're expanding. He wanted some air. Who's this? Claude. How are you? Glad to know you. Out of a clear sky, he says, Bub, what do you want for the station? Without laughing, I says, 12500 with a little house in the rear thrown in. And without laughing, he says, I'll take it. And it's his, and here's your share. I made it out for a thousand more. Oh, no, you shouldn't. Don't argue. We both did all right on that deal, thanks to both of you. I bought another place up the line. You're in on that, too, if you want. And believe me, if I can ever do you a favor. Well, uh, you can give Claude a job. He'll sell a lot of gas for you. He's got one. Here, look me up, Claude. Good. Now, you want to celebrate? Want to dance the night away? Uh, we're hardly in the mood for that. Well, pardon the intrusion. Come on, little mother. I think I'll go along. No, you're getting stiff, you know. Lou, somebody paid us back. I'm glad for a, a lot of reasons. I'm glad for them, and I'm glad for myself. Kind of renews your faith in people. You know, it's funny, Lou. We're so close in so many ways, and yet we seem to differ on things that I think are important. I wish we could get together on what is really valuable in life. I find happiness in different things than you do. I guess I did go overboard in helping them and not thinking about you and your home. 
And I realize both are important. But you weren't there when I talked to the two of them. It seems so right to tell them they must have the baby. And they'd regret it the rest of their lives if they didn't. Years later, they'd find themselves saying, he'd be 16 now. Well, that's about it. The house seemed awfully unimportant at that moment. Maybe, maybe I'm unbalanced and my scales need adjusting, but when I, when I put some things on one side and material things on the other, my scales go this way. And gosh, I'll never change, Lou, because that's the way I am. And so, while you're in Paris... Who's going to Paris? Well, thanks again for everything. I'll be all right, Mr. Clayton. I'm going to stay with Ruthie. on people. Now we can buy the house and maybe live happily ever after. Hmm? Claude, I feel badly enough now. Why don't you go home to your sister? She's told you all about me. Probably my sister now. She told me she was coming over to see you. Oh, no. No, Claude, I don't want to see your sister. Why not? Well... Why don't you be nice to people? She shot off her big mouth and she's sorry. She just wants to tell you so. Come on. Give her a break. Come on in, sis. I just came by to show her my new uniform. Tell her I love her and that all she has to do is set the date. Lou, you can take it up from there as to what she needs. Flowers, the right clothes. You know all about those things. And make her look lovely, Lou. You know, after all, I couldn't be seen with a dowdy bride. Goodbye. May I sit down? Is there something else wrong with me? Didn't you say it all yesterday? What else is on your mind? Say it. I was just wondering if my wedding gown could be altered to fit you. I think it could. Well, that is, of course, if you like blue. Oh, it would go wonderfully with your hair and eyes. And I'd be more than happy if you'd wear it. I could bring it over and you could try it on, huh? Oh, but you'll have some ideas of your own. You'd look lovely in white, too. Oh, I love blue. Oh, Mrs. Clayton, I'll make your brother the best wife a man ever had. But I'd like to straighten you out about me. I'm not really as bad as you think I am. Oh, please, please don't. Come on, let's talk about your shoes. I know exactly where to buy them, believe me. And, oh, oh yes, the hat. I love your brother so much. Oh, I do too. But I want to warn you, you're marrying a screwball. I know. But I understand it. You do? Mm-hmm. I guess we have two of the most wonderful men in the world. I know I have. But you can speak for yourself. I will admit that Claude's a little different. I guess, let's say that at the moment, you have the most wonderful husband in the world. Did you see the morning paper? No. <laughs> Look.
Hello there. Well, hello. It's nice to see you. Thank you. What have you been doing? I've been taking lessons on the third floor. Well, how, how, how are you doing? How am I doing? <laughs> Look, Argyle. Oh, pretty. <laughs> you get the first pair. What size do you wear? Uh, 11 and a half. I'll make them 12. You may grow a little, they may shrink a little. Mr. Clayton, here's the money from the fourth and fifth floors. They came through 100%. Right. That's everybody, except Mr. Borden. What goes on here? You see, every year Mr. Clayton gives a Christmas dinner for the destitute, and everybody in the store contributes to it. I must get in on this. You know, I go to school here. Well, thank you. Say, with all that money, you ought to get to the bank, or someone bops you on the head. That's right, where I'm going. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Hello, Mr. Clayton. Oh, Joe, sorry to keep you waiting. It's all right. Where are the turkeys? Over in the truck. Three more loads coming. <laughs> Best bunch I ever raised, too. Here's the bill. Hey, you raised the price, too. Oh, well, feed and everything's going up, you know. Here, I have it all made out except for the amount. Mm. Hey. Thank you, Joe. Well, thank you, Mr. Clayton. Well, Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Same to you. Call you next year. Bye. Here, more ice. Say, I shouldn't be here. What time? Hey, she took my watch, too. What happened? Oh, all I know is somebody hit me on the head from behind. How'd she get you up here anyway? She had a heart attack. She said she didn't want me to take her to the hospital. She'd be all right if I brought her home, so I brought her here. I asked her if she'd had these spells before. She said only after she lost the baby. Oh, the baby. Mm -hmm. What's the idea walking around with all this money on you? Haven't you got a bank? Yeah, I... Bank. Yes, I've got to get to the bank. Say, you did get a bump, didn't you? <laughs> Feeling better? Yeah, I feel fine now. You see, Al, the way it is, I actually paid for the turkeys out of the money I was supposed to buy a house with. Now I've lost the employees' money, and I've got to raise quite a chunk of dough. Is there no way the bank could loan me enough? Lord Sam, I'd like to help you, but my hands are tied. You're on too many people's notes now. You were a bad risk before this happened, and now you're in a terrible mess. Yeah, I guess unless I can think of something, we've lost our new home. Sorry, I couldn't help you, Sam. Have another drink. Just one. I, I clunk up my head and made me kind of woozy. I'll have one with you. Well, Sam, here's hoping that somehow you have a very Merry Christmas. Hey, will you clear the driveway for me? Sure. Why home so early? Oh, darling, this is absolutely the happiest day of my life. And have I got news for you? Guess what? Lou, where are they taking our, our sofa? Sam, listen. The Nelsons are letting us move into the new house right now. Isn't that wonderful? Y y yeah. Well, look a little more surprised and delighted, darling. Oh, Sam, you've been right and I've been wrong about so many things. I have? Mm-hmm. Well, Lou, uh, where are they taking our... That's what I mean. I gave all the furniture away. You keep the furniture away? Well, stop them, Lou. Why? Oh, look, Sam. Now it can be told. 
I'm sick of looking at it. I'm tired of every piece. The second-hand dealers would give us little or nothing, so I call the Salvation Army. Why not give it to them? I felt that's what you'd want me to do. It'll help brighten some poor family's Christmas. Help make it as merry as ours is going to be. Well, what's the matter, darling? What's wrong? Oh, nothing. What made you say that? Oh, you've been working too hard. That annual Christmas dinner must be an awful headache. Yes, it is. You're giving everything away, hmm? Sure, and I got another big surprise for you. Another surprise? Mm -hmm. Ready, Mrs. Clayton? Oh, I'll be right with you. Where are you going? That's the other surprise. We're going to have dinner tonight in our own new home. Chloe's out buying everything. And it will consist of all your favorite dishes, including me. Oh, and don't come home till 6.30. I want everything to be just right. And to give you a rough idea, dinner starts with a surprise. Flown in at great expense. Goodbye. See you in paradise. Called up everybody that owed you money. Yeah. They wouldn't give you a dime, huh? No. Well, they'll do it every time. Everybody I asked said I couldn't have picked a worse time. Glad to pay you, Sam, but not now. <laughs> Just when I need it. <laughs> Love to pay you, Sam, but you know what doctor's bills are. Just got on my feet when I broke my leg. <laughs> Sorry, Sam, but three boys in the hospital. No, three boys in the college. My mother-in-law in a tent. <laughs> uh, oxygen tent. Oh. But don't you worry, you'll get it if it's the last thing I ever do. But not right now. Not right now. <laughs> Can you wait till April? Yeah, some April. Yeah, people are all alike, Sam. I know what you mean. I wish I could help you, but I had a bookmaker in here taking bets, and it was only last month that he Ran away with all the cash I had. Must have been quite a blow to your wife. No, she ran with him. Maybe I should buy you a drink. Well, I could stand one right now, thanks. <laughs> Miss Clayton, you look gorgeous. <laughs> yes, and I hope Mr. Clayton will forget what it costs when he sees me in it. He will. <laughs> Mommy, when will Daddy come home? Any minute now, dear. We're hungry, Mommy. Oh, will you come on, show Mommy what you're going to do when Daddy gets home? Come on, Chloe. All right, all right. Backstage, everybody. Be sure and start together now. Remember your finish? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, here comes Dad. Good evening, Daddy, dear. We're glad you're here. So nice to welcome you. All of us and Chloe we want to show you we're glad to see you. And now you'll be so glad to hear we have some happy news for you. Now that we have a better home, we'll all be better too. <laughs> we better be better. Hmm? I don't say anything, pardon me. Sorry. You know, you know what Confucius said about helping people? Yeah, he, he said so many things. He's got me all mixed up. Well, he said... Confucius fills me with confusion. <laughs> Everybody said it. I got a whole book full of them at home. There's an old Scotch proverb. That says, uh, do a man a good turn and he'll never forgive you. Forgive is forgive in Scotch. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I saw Harry Lauder at the palace back in uh, 1917. Allow me to quote. Go ahead, go ahead. He who has drunk his fill turns his back on the filly. Well, I kind of like that. Now, that. That's a guy that's been around. <laughs> yeah, no, but that isn't right. He, uh -huh. he who has drunk his fill turns his back on the well. Oh, oh it's a little dull that way, don't you think? No. Well, maybe he worked late at the store, Lou. Why didn't he telephone then? Did Daddy know we were going to have black raspberry ice cream? No, dear. 
We were going to surprise him. Do you think something happened to him, Mommy? Oh, no. No, your daddy's all right. Maybe he isn't. Even the Arabs warned me. Uh -huh. They said, Sam, do no good and you'll suffer no ingratitude. Ah, look at the clothes they wear. Uh -huh. No pockets. Oh. Ask an Arab for a buck and he'll fold up his tent and silently steal away. <laughs> yeah. How about a drink, pal? Oh, now on your way now, putty face. Fall apart outside, will oh, you? I gotta have a drink. I've had it tough, pals. Believe me, I've seen better days. Well, then go ahead and live on your memory. Now get out of here, will you? Come on back, friend. I'll buy you a drink. Oh, oh I don't get you, Sam. There you go again. But, Tom, there's a, some good in everybody. Well, the only thing in him that's any good is my whiskey. Some people are less fortunate than we are. All he needs is a helping hand. Oh, I do, do I? <laughs> I can't remember when I heard a more stupid remark. <laughs> you're not really helping me. All you're doing is boasting of your own ego. Yeah. <laughs> so he bought me a couple of lousy drinks. And I feel good about it. All warm inside. Uh, <laughs> I'll bet you feel better than I do. Oh, why don't you get out of here, you crumble bum? This guy's got his own troubles. He's got troubles. Yeah. He's got troubles. Yeah. yeah. He's one of the upper ten. He's got everything. <laughs> You can afford to be condescending. Dressed in the height of fashion. Look at his clothes. Look. Uh, Look at mine. Yeah, well, just keep that up and he'll give you his. That I want to see, my friend. Uh, that uh, I want to see. There's a lot of fine talk in this world, but no action. No action. No uh, action. Well, you're going to see some action now, buddy. That's what I want. Action. Hey, uh, what are you doing there? I'm going to call the wagon and put that bug in the jug. Uh oh No, no, don't. Hey, come back, bug. Why don't you go to bed and, and, and sleep it off? Uh, there you go again. Sitting there bedecked in your royal raiments, and laughing inwardly. <laughs> For you know I have no home and no bed in which to rest my head. No. No? I didn't know that. That's right. Well, I'll get you one. All right. You want me to sleep well, don't you? Thanks. Now, don't forget to give him the shirt off your back. I'll, I'll be back. Don't drop him in here. And get him out of that woodwork, will you? Get him out of here. How do you do? Hi, there. I'm Mr. Drew from the bank. Yes, sir. I'd like to see Mr. Clayton. Well, it's a bad time to see him. He ain't here. Well, uh, could I see Mrs. Clayton? Uh, well, um... It's rather important. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, sir. Well, you wait. Oh, well, you better come in, sir. I feel that I'm directly responsible for what happened. I turned him down for a loan because he had no security. Then I got to thinking, what kind of a world is this? There must be something rotten somewhere when a man like your husband can't get a loan. I'm not for revising the banking laws, but sometimes we should make an exception and take a good heart for security. So rest assured, this house is yours. Oh, what wonderful news. If only he were here. I made him feel that I wanted this more than anything else in the world. More than I wanted him. Tommy. Tommy, my boy. Some of my stuff. Hmm? You've had enough now, Sam. Go on home. What am I going to do with a guy like that? Look at him now. Come back here, will you? No. I want to be alone. Oh. Come 
I going to have trouble with you? Not if you leave me alone. Sam, you're too nice a guy. Who's a nice guy? You are. Why, well, you haven't got a mean streak in you. I haven't, huh? Well, I guess you have. Give it to me, will you? Give it to me, Sam. Give it to me. <laughs> From now on, I'm the meanest man in town. Watch and see. I'm commencing to believe it. Watch the next person that comes up with a, for a helping hand. Out. The next character that comes up to me with his hand out, see what I do? Out. Oh, Sam. Oh, sorry, miss. I'm awful sorry. He's a nice fellow when he's not drinking. Miss, I... He shouldn't have done that. Here, this will cover what was missing, maybe. Okay. Here, miss. I wonder if you'll help me get him out of here, get him home. I'm sorry, miss. Don't. Thank you. All right, Sam. You're all right. Pleasures and palaces, though we may roam, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Home, home, sweet, sweet home, there's no place like home, be it ever so humble. Oh, why don't you go home? Home, home, sweet. We'll find a bed for him. Oh, gee, will you, lady? Yes. Oh, that's great. That's fine here. Take this, and I hope it helps out. Thank you. You're welcome. Come on. Oh, wait a minute. He's tied off. Take it away. Sir, have a cigar. Lou, it's here. A baby boy, eight pounds. Little Sam. Isn't it wonderful? Well, what's the matter? Do you think we have enough babies? Sam Clayton is missing. No. There's something's happened to him. We're terribly worried. Well, what could happen to Sam? Everybody loved him. He had no enemies. Well, he's too nice a guy to be missing. Oh, he's bound to turn up. Nobody would harm him. Well, he took care of everybody. And everybody will take care of him. The world needs Sam Clayton. So do I.
address on him. Is he your husband? Uh-huh. They're wonderful people, Lou. Yes, dear. I'm a failure, Lou. I'm going to join them. You're much better off without me. I'm no good for you, Lou. You're still young and so attractive, isn't she? So are you, you big. Oh, I've messed up our lives. I just stumble along and... You've just stumbled into the vice presidency of the store. Yes. According to the banker man here, he's going to loan us the money so the house will be ours, too. That's right. And he hasn't been drinking. Uh, did you hear that? <laughs> I, I, I'm not a failure. Do you take successful people, too? Thank you so much. <laughs> you are wonderful people. I'm so glad I gave you all my furniture because you brought him home safely. Furniture up on the waters, I always say. Won't you all come in the house and have a great big slug of hot chocolate? Oh, hot chocolate. No, thank you. I think we'd better be going. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Hey, wait a minute. Just one more song, hmm? All right. What'll it be? Well, I know. <laughs> Let me call you, sweetheart. I'm in love. That you love me too. All right, I love you too. Keep the love light burning, glowing, glowing in your eyes so blue. Let me call you sweetheart. Oh. <laughs> 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 